Ladies and gentlemen, it's lion time, so let's get waffling. Now, Neil, I don't expect you to understand that intro. I have no idea what that is. Uh, it's, it's, I would describe, it, it's good content. It, it's Chapter Master Balrog on YouTube, a 40k uh, person. He always talks about the lion, he has a tinfoil hat, he does like the Alex Jones meme. Um, it's pretty funny, although it's kind of like the... Like that bag of Girl Scout cookies or box of Girl Scout cookies, like it's there. It's not giving you a lot of substance, but it's still good and you want it. That's what his content is. Like it's good and it's entertaining, but it's not giving you anything. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know. Well, yeah, it's, um, it's 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 the snack food of 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 forty k content. But it's you know I, I enjoy it and I'm gonna keep going back in because it's fun. Well, that's great. It's a good analogy because your Girl Scout cookies just came in yesterday. So oh, that's fant yeah. fantastic. That's a, that's a nice little uh, March treat. <laughs> but, yeah. Neil, do you know this is episode 49? I'm sure you do. Oh, of course I did. Yes. I mean, we're coming up on the big 5-0, which took, took many years, took many versions of this show to come through before... I found what I like, which is just talking to you about whatever the hell we feel like talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Many iterations. Yeah. Well, it's like, well, I, I'm not good alone. And a group of like five of us was just too much for me to handle. Is you know, I'm not experienced with that. It wasn't really keeping the flow down, wasn't right. And then, you know, trying to figure out like, okay, well, you know, like I, Matt wants to talk about, um, reviewing army books all, all the stuff that like is fun and i enjoy but i don't want to talk about that on a podcast because everyone else does it yeah. <laughs> so i had to find the i i had to keep drilling down to find someone who's on the lowest level of intelligence like me that leaves their phone on noise making yeah. mode during the yeah. podcast live so i found yeah. you and here we are that's fun yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Every once in a while, you know, you're going to get something semi-unprofessional from me. And by every once in a while, I mean probably every show. Yeah, it's it's the bingo card for us. There's a bingo card for us. Did you know that? Well, there's only two I love it, though. There's I only, love it, yeah. Yeah, there's only two spaces. Free space and unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, say something on the podcast that makes Big M um, want to pull his hair out. Oh. I mean... Yeah, we, we'll get to that eventually, I'm sure. We'll find it. We'll figure it out. But, uh, yeah, episode 49. This is this is exciting. So let, let, I guess we should probably just dive right into it, uh, mm -hmm. starting with our usual fitness chat update, the part that if you make it through this and we talk about Warhammer finally. Neil, how's your fitness been? What are you doing to improve your health? Uh, nothing much changed. Still body weight stuff. I'm um, starting to throw in some stretching because my hamstrings are tight enough to uh, play a song on. Ooh. So they are really bad lately. I've been very, 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 very tight. And it's like affecting a lot. So um, I'll have to yeah, show I'm you my to... my favorite stretch for hamstrings. It's it's very, it's very, like you're not going to hurt yourself doing it. Uh, and I use it. Every day that I'm doing anything that anything that's posterior chain, I warm up with it. It's it's fantastic. In order for me to keep my knees straight, like at one point I was able to touch my toes. I'm pretty sure I'm a solid ten inches away at this point. It is uh, it's bad. Hmm. It's really bad. We know how to. I mean, you know, you know what a good good morning is, right? I do know what a good morning is. Yeah. Okay, so what you do is you do half the good morning, so you're you know you're bent over, and then from that position. Just go down into a squat. And then from there, stand up back into the good morning bent over position. Like slowly. Like don't don't rush it. But that is the best thing I've ever found to stretch out my hamstrings. Like I would not... have to do that good morning with no weight 
and I would still potentially oh, yeah, I mean, blow you, up my back. No, you're, 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 you're <laughs> listen, yeah, do it, do it with no weight. At, at most, I'm doing that on warm up with the bar, so 45 pounds at most, but do it no weight to start, like, absolutely. Oh my god, my my hamstrings may snap off my leg. Nah, you'll be fine. Try it. give it give it a go tonight. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be just fine. do just do one. You'll be fine. <laughs> All the greatest things have always ended with uh, you'll be fine, right? <laughs> it's just a quick quick crying, baby. You don't need your legs to play Warhammer. Yeah, it's just like it's like the famous like where like, you pack your your something on top of your car. You're like that's not going anywhere. I got. Did you flick the strap? You always got to yeah. flick that strap. You don't you're just hold it with your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, when I worked in a, a lumber yard, I'd see some, some, sh- some bad stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like someone in the minivan, you know, literally their arms were out the door and they're carrying like a. <laughs> it was a it was a twelve foot piece. It was a it was a two by ten twelve foot, L minivan, and like they were just like you know windows down, both of them holding it out the outside, and they're driving away with it, and. Neil, I'm not sure if you've done much, like, re- th- projects where you need to buy lumber. Oh, yeah, sure but, I have. Yeah, yeah, but chances are, when you're buying when you're buying a, a 12-foot piece of something, you don't need 12 feet, right? Yeah, you can always cut it, yeah. You're going to cut it. And, I mean, you could bring a saw and cut it, like, he... <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I bet those idiots probably needed, like, eight feet eight foot or two six foot and then we could have sold them that too you know like it'd be the same price it's lumber yeah. by the foot it's... <laughs> oh well anyway uh my fitness uh it hasn't been thrilling this past week so far um i've just been so swamped with work that uh my it's been home workouts for me so i haven't been able to make it to the gym to work out with alex uh as you... i usually do with our program because you know yeah have a partner always helps you get more out of a workout but uh it's just been home workouts getting it in as i can just because just it, i don't know it's just i don't know we're very swamped week but that's that's all right it's gonna happen and still getting something in still getting movement still moving some weight just you know can't ever stop gotta keep the keep the brain happy by picking up the heavy stuff mm. but that leads into the next topic neil we've only done this 49 times let's just ignore the fact that this isn't. We haven't done this forty nine times. This is just the forty ninth episode. Mm-hmm. You know what's next? What's next? Oh, jeez, what's next? The news. <laughs> we 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 almost never do news, Neil. I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> what? All right. No. Fine. This is what we're doing. I'm going to open up the Warhammer yeah. community page, and I'm, we're going to do the news. That's oh, what Neil says is what it. we don't do. Don't do it to me. I don't nope. even want to listen to this. Nope. Here we go. No. Oh, so, all right. God. Warhammer <laughs> community. If you're listening along at home, you could also do this, and that's why I feel like... Maybe yeah, you, you don't need to talk about this. Delicious. Let's see. There's a 40k so, meta watch. Dark Angels on top. I don't know why. I don't pay that much attention. Uh, mm-hmm. They made the Vashtor model. It looks cool. Congrats to the sculptor, who's not going to get your last name recognized on the community site. But it looks cool. Uh, new horse heresy <laughs> tanks. That's fine. Um, new snick rot. I don't know. Which play looks works. exactly like the old horse heresy tank, except there might be like some kind of different it's, gun. It's plastic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's they, the same exact chassis. They mentioned some rules about the new snick rot model that they revealed. That's cool. I don't play orcs, but I'll see it on the table because Alex plays orcs. Um, more Vashtor stuff, because that book's on pre-order this week. Uh, there's a Black Library character model for Kadia, which is cool. I, I do like that. I like that they're making book characters in the models. That's awesome. Uh, actually, exciting news. We're getting a Black Talent animation that's been teased. That's good. Um, they're mentioning more stuff about Azrael and the Dark Angels, and I'm a Dark Angel player, so that's fine. There's some Dwarf Hand model thing. I don't know. It's in a glove. I don't know. How much, how, how much more do we need to go, Neil? Where are we at? uh all the 40k stuff oh well okay there's there's lots of stuff going on about your tau boyfriends um Ooh, yeah uh commander farsight there's ten out of ten. Yeah. He's, it is a good model it's a good model yeah and i'm not sure if you saw it, the new model on his right wrist there's like that black device and has that symbol on it yeah i've seen i've, I've heard uh Do you hear the rumors uh, uh what are the rumors well it's no it could just be a symbol being a symbol but if you actually look at that symbol from the 30k dark angels that's called the hexagrammaton and that's essentially their wings of battle essentially um 
which is kind of similar to like the Tau having their casts in a way. Not that exactly. I'm probably stretching that a little bit, but and then all the rumors are Dark Angel stuff and the line coming back, so it's like okay, you know how Gilliman in the lore had his um anime waifu Yvrain? Maybe maybe the lion's gonna be warrior buddies with uh with Farsight here. I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm just saying. No, no, we we don't space marine in Tau. He might space marine in Tau. Um, Army Sun Parade, White Dwarf, um, uh, oh, pre- the, all the all the KO and pre-orders and regiments are now, and I, I spent lots yeah. of money on dwarves recently, Neil. Did you? <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, you didn't tell me what you ordered. Oh, all right, well, tell you what, we should probably go into the hobby time, which is our usual next segment yeah. before we, mm-hmm. the news that we're just going to shoe in now forever, we have to. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, let's other news. Um, go watch other people's content. Hey, we did a funny video. Vince did this weekly show. It's great. Um, I've probably watched other. No, I've watched lots of video game content lately. Anyway, um, hobby Neil, what's your hobby been lately? Uh, Last week, see, I um, so I got, I traded my entire Soulblade Gravelords army. What? I knew this was Soulblade. a potential, but where did what? It kind of came out of nowhere. It's all really. It's all your fault, actually. Wait, because uh, okay. uh, you sent it. some stormcast my way, and I started thinking. I was actually looking at. Um, oh, what was the first stormcast warband for Underworlds? Oh, Steel Steelhearts Heart? Champions. Yes, yes. The big liberator with the grand hammer. Yep. I was just kind of looking at this model, right? I'm looking at it. I'm like, this is the coolest goddamn model I'm, I I might have on my shelves right here. Like, I love the way he's just sitting there with that big-ass hammer looking like he's just going to wreck yeah, some stuff. Just so casual like, about it, yep. And I'm like, I love this model so much. I feel like I want to have an army of these guys. And uh, I'd already gotten some stuff that you'd given me. And then I was talking to my friend John, John D. And John D. is just like, I've got like... The two big dragon guys, Krondis and uh, what's his face? Uh, Karazai. 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 Yeah. And uh, oh my God, I kind of want to have those guys, you know, and uh, yeah, cool. I always thought the prime was cool. I feel like these rules have just done him dirty. Yeah. 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 He's, he's a cool model. It's just no like, doubt. hey, here's this awesome model that you can't put on the table for three turns. And once you do, it doesn't matter anymore because you already lost. <laughs> I, I I, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I don't like his rules. That. I don't like his rules yeah. either. I think he should be, you know, a 450 point model and he should act like it. Right. And get him in there and let him smash face the whole game. Let me play with my toy. But anyway, um, and even the, even the other angel, um, uh, Yandrasta, yeah, or she's whatever. Cool. Yep. Um, I, I wish she, she, her rules were a little bit better too, but not that they're terrible, but yeah. anyway, um, so I do, I have a full Stormcast army at this point. I converted because Ooh. I have so many, I have, I think, I think I have at least, <laughs> it might be close to 80, um, what are they? The Vindic- Vindicators? Wait, the, the, the spear the, and shield guys? 80 of those? Guys? I think I got 80 of them. Oh so, boy. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's too many. It's too many. Yeah, I, you I, need, I, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you don't need that many. So anyway, what I what I thought to myself, I said, self, um, maybe we could convert some of these things into like the guys with the swords. And I had just enough swords to make 10 of the, uh, man, I'm having the worst time trying to remember the names of these uh, units. Vanquishers? Vanquishers? Yeah. Vanquishers. Vanquishers, yeah. So converted 10 of those. Um, and then I kind of built an army list out of the stuff that I currently have mm-hmm. and uh, sprayed most of it. Uh, was it yesterday? Did you put what, uh, what, some uh, indoor priming. What color did you uh, spray it? Uh, that's all silver because we're going to be some hallowed knights. Ooh, and by the way, nice. these would have been hallowed knights had I made a Stormcast army three years ago prior to um, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Gardas. Gardas, Gardas Steel Soul, and him actually making that army good. Um, I'd, I'd still done Hollow Knights because I just love the only the faithful thing, and yep. uh, I know I do. took uh, I took that to heart when uh, AOS kind of swung over to its first edition and everything. And so, I, little yeah, side yeah. tangent here, I'm I'm so mad that I started painting Stormcast before they really like fleshed out the other chambers. Yeah, because when it started, you just had the hammers, which are cool, but I didn't want to paint the gold army. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'll just do my own thing. And now I'm like, I wish I, I and I like Hallowed Knights too. Yeah. And I wish I, my whole army was Hallowed Knights. But uh, you can repaint them. There is so many. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, uh-huh. I, I, and but they're, they're the easiest paint. I mean, you spray the metal, you pick out the blue bits, but the you do pro- some gold. Yeah, but all the basing because it was just my it was my transition army into sigmar but all the oh, basing all is flock. is all flock so that'd be a nightmare to f- uh, could i do it yes do i want to absolutely not no well, okay well that's fair yeah but uh i don't know so i'm excited about that uh yeah, that's all, i don't that's even know awesome. if it'll work on the tabletop and everything i like i think it's gonna be cool just to sit on my shelf painted even if i don't play it a whole oh, lot stormcast you know? army is beautiful no matter what and like i said you can oh. get some fun out of it worst case it's just a it's a fun army for some fun like i said yeah, the... i'll take it i'll take it for a club night here or there you know yeah exactly um, but anyway um yeah so that i did that oh i uh i played in a warhammer fantasy uh pseudo event um ben langan who's running the adepticon um more eighth edition warhammer fantasy with some uh with a pack that kind of changes some things here and there to make uh, you know some of the things that he doesn't like about the game yeah it's, uh, it's comp i don't like it. it it's comp it's definitely <laughs> comp um i don't like uh, comp. I, I, I did because it's not comp in terms of like you know this model's now 60 points or you can't play with that model or anything like that it just makes it's very uh, light comp it's very light comp yeah yeah, it, it makes some like cavalry have a little bit more punch, and uh, you know, it makes you want have to take more core than um, what you normally have to take. Uh, you, you can't take double rares, you know, so it takes some of the uh, it's, I don't it's, know, it's cheesier it's, stuff you could do, yeah, kind of out it, of the it's it's kind of that thing where if you were playing at a regular group of guys and someone brought this filthy list after like once or twice beating everybody with it, it's like you'd kind of like you'd be like oh, i should probably tone this down so you'd, you'd put limits on yourself right yeah right. that's what most of what he did which is it's fine i get it but yeah, yeah. it's still calm and so the other thing he did was put um objective based play into it which um uh, cole and i uh, both loved loved it to death see i'm so uh, i'm so curious about that because like that's a that's is an interesting concept to like why well, i'm not the game but you know one of my armies is dwarfs and like i don't yeah. move and I it was don't it's, move. it's done on purpose because dwarves don't move. Move. But that's what they're supposed to be. I get it. No, to, I, no, no, yes. I disagree with I, you. I get, get it. I get there. it. Go, go on. No, I, I, I get it for the uh, how orcs. Remember when orcs and goblins became like the shooty gunline army? And that was stupid. But that was rules issues. Dwarves are a gun line. That's what they're supposed I, to be. They have a no. few, few, few units. I mean, you could build a combat list, but like that's not what they're about. I don't know. I th- like they they, they know, form a wall. Like... They blast you to hell, and when you get in touch with them with whatever you have left, they're probably strong enough to just hold you up and just and take you out. That's what go the words are supposed to be. I, I I beg you to go listen to Garage Hammers take on or like uh, episode on the dwarves and fantasy and eighth, and the guy that they have on there said the most viable list is not a gun line. I disagree. <laughs> so i mean it's out there and it can be played yeah, I, and i think like i like it because it's going to force people to get out of the habits of just playing the same old crap that everybody's always played with dwarves which is a gun line which for anybody else is literally an atrocious game to play but whenever um, i play my dwarves i take it because i want to play the gun line like when i want to move i'll take my elves when i want to so, want to play gun line i'll take my dwarves like that's you, and like i said and there's a specific balance like i mean there is going to be some sort of like a, a meta balance with dwarves not having the gun line anymore like that's going to shift up other things like and it's small microcosms not a lot of people play fantasy but like if that say it was happening and that that became a thing like that would really shift up the meta because like it's like, and it's like i'm so interested in the concept but i'm just like curious how it would affect my yeah. one army that just says no this doesn't what do i do well it was neat too is like um like you can it's just played on like the seven and a half circles and there's three of them Mm-hmm. There's one, uh, you know, and they're spread equally across the entire six foot map, right? It's played on six foot the way God intended it. And um, <laughs> and so if like if you tow in just a basic core infantry choice like that has, you know, like 40K obsec, right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter how many wounds or anything else you have on it. If you tow it in, you've got it. So like you could fly a gyrocopter out there, tag into one, score a point or there. There's definitely other ways to score points. Um, based on banners you take, 
things mm-hmm. that you kill. So I would actually be curious to know how it were if you played that gun line and you just decimated some other army, whether you would even need to score on those objectives, right? Because all it's doing is making sure that those people come to score their points even closer to you right. to get shot more. <laughs> so, well, I mean, they, they're coming in any edition, they're coming towards you because they have to come yeah. fight you. That's what they sure, do. Sure, they have to. Yeah. So I, I'm, just, I'm just curious. Like I said, it's, I think there's probably ways that you could mitigate that on mm-hmm. both on the on the end of saying that we're doing objectives uh, as well as the player with the doors will still bring a gun line but it's it's more of an interesting curiosity I'm, I'm i'm willing to try it with my dwarfs one day but i might be like be a grouchy old dwarf and be like no i don't like it it's new <laughs> <laughs> but uh we we actually only wound up getting one game in i played cole um cole for the most part um had a rough game but I mean, and, part of your uh, hobby can count for the uh, stuff you finished printing for him, though. That's true. I, I did finish the twenty five hundred point army that he had on the table. Yep, Empire and uh, Empire. Yeah, and so he had a steam tank, and I could not even take a wound off that steam tank for Ooh. the most part all game, um, because little arrows plinking off the side of it, uh, as it turns out, don't really do anything. And you're playing high elves, I assume. Yes. yes. Um, so he rolled no ones ever which is the only way I was going to hurt that thing. <laughs> and uh, then, but he didn't play it very well. And we didn't really understand the movement rules for it very well. And I was telling him, I kept on telling like, I'm pretty sure it can just kind of pivot on the spot. It doesn't need to like turn like a, like a regular unit. No, I think that steam tank is, is like a chariot. I think it has to do the movement. It has to do the regular I think movement. The ta- for some reason in my mind, the steam tank does. Really? Because it does say that it is a chariot, but I thought it could like spin on its like axis like a single model. But I mean, you could reform, but then you can't do much else. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, then. Okay, we were playing it right then. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So, um, but yeah. So once we played that, he could kind of spin it around, do whatever the hell, and he started taking it into my uh, troops at the end of the game when the game was out of reach. Uh, he started chewing through me like left and right, but. Uh, it was a really, really fun game with how everything kind of turned out. Some of the, the charges and uh, some of the things that held. It's just a classic game of fantasy where, there like, you, you think something's going to happen, it doesn't happen. Um, yep. You position yourself, and then you realize, oh my god, I just did this really good thing by doing this, and I didn't even know that this was going to end up happening this way. Fantasy is full of that kind of stuff in the games, and I really do enjoy that. Um, yeah. So yeah, a lot of fun there. We only played the one game um, because we're like, hey, you know, we, we finished our game. We're like, you want to go get lunch? He's like, yeah, let's go get lunch. So we went and got lunch. And I looked down at my uh, my phone. And I'm like, oh shit, it's four thirty. This isn't really <laughs> lunch, is it? <laughs> well, yeah, it was a late start to that. Yeah, it was. It was. So. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I, I almost tried to make it out there, but no, not my way. Was willing to do that drive with me for a day. And, yeah. I mean, in hindsight, like knowing that it was just like one game and it wasn't much. Like, yeah, we we could have played two if there were more people. Yeah, there, but, yeah. You know, I was. They did actually have um, one, two, three, four, five tables of fantasy going, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, for one game, I did. It's a six-hour drive. That's not exciting. <laughs> so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad that I got busier that day. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, but uh, that was my hobby. Good. I, I, I never actually mentioned my games in hobby. I. I, I keep forgetting that for somehow but i i play pretty much a fantasy game almost every week <laughs> right now um at my usual weekly the barn owls our little little local group we have um took my dwarves out against uh, some corn and had a good time uh like i said it was, it was dwarf gun line and and uh i i didn't I played a little soft with my shooting. I wasn't like just absolutely decimating units. I was like, I was spreading it around because like it's a corn army and you know, I don't want to just shoot half of it off the table. It's like, I'll, I'll shoot here and I'll shoot here a little bit. So that way when you get in combat, there's some stuff and we have a good time about it in the end. So it was a good game. Um, oh my God. Whenever you can just hold back because you're playing a guy. Oh, barf. Well, listen, I've taken that, <laughs> that same list against uh, the same friend, Tom, with his gut star and i'm blasting the hell out of one thing and dear god it's not enough <laughs> so yeah. it's corn, corn it's like yeah corn's def. I, it wasn't the meta it's it's yeah it, you need to kind of and like I, and i was actually going to take dark elves to go against it for something a little bit different but mm-hmm. i forgot how 
many Dark Elves I have, and the, it would have been a nightmare to unpack it all. So I was like, ah, oh, the Dwarves are the easiest army for me to pull out, because I have the yeah. fewest amount of models, so that's why I did that. Yeah. Uh, no, it was a good time, and actually it was kind of neat. Uh, he actually is using a bunch, almost all Age of Sigmar models for his classic fantasy corn, because, you know, Marauders, 32 mil bases, um... Uh, he was using the uh, Blood Warriors as just his um, uh, Chaos Knight or Chaos Warriors stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It was just and then uh, I said he was using like uh, in the center of each of those Marauders, he took Blood Secretors and put them on like a big base, like it would be four wide to make the unit filler. It, it looked really cool, and I was I was kind of surprised. I'm like, huh, those look really good on retro rowing back. And sometimes models do that okay, and some don't. Yeah. Just like some come up okay and, and look good in Sigmar and some don't. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was neat and I look forward to seeing it painted up. And it was his newest army so it was just kind of primed in Zenithold. Uh, as far as painting goes, I'm happy to say I don't have any more terrain to paint. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was getting tired for you. I was getting tired of just seeing it. <laughs> well, listen, thankfully <laughs> had plenty of help from generous folks so it was a it's good. It's all done. It's all packed up. I'm waiting for the shipping labels to get over half of it shipped out. Like half of it's gone now, or just about half of it's gone now. The rest are going to right to Adepticon. It's going to be used at Adepticon. They're part of the US Open terrain, not the Warhammer Fest stuff. Mm -hmm. So, waiting for those labels, get those out of the house. And I do technically still have some GW terrain in my basement, but it was we didn't have a plan to use it yet. So, it looks like I'm just storing terrain for GW that's in boxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not built it's not, and like I said there's no time frame for it so whatever figure it out when we get there but it's not yeah. due so I can get back to what I want to do which is my own hobby which I've been doing uh getting the fire slayers painted up um doing good I got the uh lovely gift of the pizza oven you gave me that's finished I have yep. I have the uh I have one of the heroes done that was my test model I have the gaunt wreck done uh and then I also have uh, the invocations done, which it's fun trying to make them look different. I think I succeeded to make them look a little different. Uh, I mean, I was happy whenever I showed the the chat today, and you're just like, "Huh, I, is that different?" Because I'm used to just seeing it all orange. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I honestly, I thought you converted the face, like the head of it. Nope, zero conversions like, on those actually. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's funny. I even had uh, somebody reach out. Like, a friend I talk to all the time, Martin uh, Orlando, um, he's like, I'd like to see you, I want to see you try to do, a, a like, a magma flow uh, paint scheme. That'd be kind of cool. I'm like, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. It's way overdone. <laughs> he's like, yeah. well, how are you doing that? I'm like, liquid metal smoke and a little bit of orange for flame heat. And he's like, oh, cool. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, everyone's just like, oh, you just got painted like it's magma. I'm like, no, I don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean... Because most of the ones I've seen, right, are all painted that lava scheme, which looks awesome. I get why. I get why. It looks the, cool. The whole thing, the whole thing, like the detail gets lost because the whole thing looks like that, if yeah. that makes sense. You know, that's why, like, I didn't know what the face looked like. Because I, when I look down, like, my brain just goes, Orange. Oh, lava. Right? <laughs> Orange you thing. Know? So it, it, it's cool. It, it, my brain doesn't say, Oh, that looks terrible. It just says lava. Yep. But yeah. That's all right. But uh, yeah, and then. I think I'm gonna do the the Rune Father on Magma Droth next, and then after that it's uh, forty infantry, some heroes, and some troop, and a lot of troops. But they're all pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. They're just naked baby dwarfs. <laughs> yeah. So figure to do that, or I might do them first and then get the Magma Droth as like a, a reward at the end. I don't know. I'll figure that out tomorrow when I'm getting the itch to paint some more. Sure. But uh, you asked earlier what I bought for my dwarf stuff. Um, so purchases are part of hobby. So okay. picked up the Regiment of Renown, the Norgrim's Rune Throng, because I like it in the KO army that I have. Because uh, I usually it kind of fills the slot of Gotrek plus I get an extra foot hero in, and then with the new book on points, it looks pretty good. Uh, to do that, so yeah, I'm throwing in. Uh, I also play Barak Thrang, so he'll get, he'll get an extra prayer. 
uh, from the uh, sub faction there. I also picked up uh, Code Right for myself and the KO Battle Tome. Mm -hmm. And then I also picked up, I wanted 10 more Iron Breakers for my Fantasy Dwarf Army. And I also picked up 10 uh, Iron Drakes. Now, the Iron Drakes were kind of a last minute whim. Uh, because I'm either going to add them to my Dwarf Fantasy Army, or I'm going to add them to my Cities of Sigmar Army, because in there, I already have a Rune Lord and 10 Longbeards, so that would give me a second version of the Rune, the Rune Throng, Regiment of Renown, that's matched uh, basing-wise and paint scheme-wise to not only my Cities, but my Daughters of Cain. And I'd use it in my Daughters of Cain, obviously, it's the only place I could use it, but... It might be interesting to try that. So I'm, I'm unsure what I'm going to do on that. But I'm going to definitely be finishing these Fire Slayers. Do the little bit I have for the KO. And then worry about the fantasy stuff after that. But probably what will happen is I'll probably take all this stuff. Push it to the side immediately when this shipment comes in. Because I also got that new Daughters of Cain Underworlds Warband. Mm -hmm. And I want to paint me some elves. I'm enjoying my dwarf vacation. But I really want to paint me some elves. Especially some dark elves. So yeah. they'll probably go right on the hobby table. I'll paint them up. Uh, and actually, the for the points and what they do, looks like they'd be good screens for Daughters of Cain, which is something my armies usually lack. So I want to get painted up to use in games. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard. I think Warhammer Weekly was talking about how that uh, that particular particular uh, regiment of renown would work well in Daughters of Cain. So. Yeah, it's, it's a small unit, but it's, it's 100 points. Uh, it has the Sisters of Slaughter keyword, so you take Drachy or Kraith, you can get some bonuses if they live, but... Uh, six oh, I was, talking, I was talking the Dwarves. I was talking oh, the I thought, sorry, I thought you meant the Daughters Cain. Yeah, the, no, the Dwarves, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, I had Daughters Cain in my mind. <laughs> and once it gets flipped into that, it doesn't want to let go. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that Dwarf regiment just seems so good in KO, as far as the best option. And it will kind of fit with the army I currently have, so that's why I'm going mm. that. But yeah, that's uh, that's all my hobby. I'm and I said getting ready for uh, I've got a club day this weekend. Uh, I got to teach a game of Age of Sigmar. Might get a game of Fantasy in, and then Sunday, this coming Sunday is an RTT out in Pittsburgh, little one day event for Sigmar. So I might go to that. The weather's fifty fifty. We get yeah. some snow coming in, so we'll see. That might. Yeah. Be why I can't go. That's probably the only reason I can't can't go, unless I'm just too tired. But uh, so yeah, hopefully lots of uh, Warhammer here in the near future. Mm -hmm. Nice. I know. Actually, uh, I always forget. Like if you forget your games, I forget to say what I bought because usually I don't buy too much. But that's true. Uh, I just got the new carriage on uh, Battle Tome as well, and mm -hmm. uh, let's see, I got Navigator and the new Code Right. So nice. Uh, we got some new stuff coming in as well. I already have a fairly full Karajan army, so mm -hmm. the only thing I don't have and I've never had is an admiral. <laughs> <laughs> and the first iteration, I felt like admiral wasn't all that great. Um, yeah, he was plus, definitely I, a, a fluff choice. I think he, like he could be yeah. like a melee beast, but like it was work to make it happen. Yeah, now now he's you kind of have to have one. Yeah, kind of absolutely, and which you makes can't sense. Find them anywhere, so. <laughs> yeah, he sold out online. I actually even mine because first I thought it's like oh, oh yeah, my admiral is that um, uh, Jake Jacob Bugman's son, that like yeah, I bought him up and painted my admiral. Like after I bought that model is when I decided to start KO because I liked him so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might be able to find something like that, like a. Uh, special well, I've got um, I've got my narrative hero. Uh, Grumjensen is his name, and so he's a, he's a completely converted with magnets and all other crap like engine master. But I can use him as a uh, admiral just as easily. Oh yeah, he looks different enough. So um, yeah, that would work. Yeah, I, although there's going to be that um, there's the story anniversary models this year for Games Workshop, and one of them is an admiral like alternative sculpt that looks amazing. So, oh yeah, uh, I mean, I there's a Warhammer store near me, but. We'll see. I might be away when it's on the birthday for when it comes out. But I might try and pick that up if I can, because it looks so good. Yeah, I got one a half an hour away, but I never think to actually figure out when the anniversary is. <laughs> <laughs> you just follow them on Facebook and check. Trust me, they post about it. Oh, really? Yeah, they you, <laughs> they make sure everyone knows. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. But yeah, let's, uh, let's dive right on into the uh, main topic of the show. 
which it's a little it's a little two parter. Um, so obviously this year we're not going to Adepticon as a group. So last year we couldn't go, so it was Adepticant. This year we're not going, so we're calling it Adepta Won't. Um, it's, it's tongue in cheek. It's funny, uh, but I'm looking forward to because it it's it's pretty much we just get together with the people we'd hang out with <laughs> regularly. Anyway. And, yeah, yeah, and. We just plus some plus some new uh, folks this year. This year. Folks, yeah. And then yeah, yep. we we are in a house and we play lots of Warhammer and we hang out and yep. no Alex will be there, so he'll probably bring cigars. Well no, hold on. Let's see if Alex listens to this. Cause I'm gonna see if he yells at me. Alex is great. But he's also young. He won't I don't think he'll remember to bring enough cigars unless he already has them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like there'll be like ten guys, and he brings like six cigars. Mm. He's like, "Oh, I want to smoke cigars." I'm like, "Well, you gotta bring enough for everybody." <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if he yells at me, or if he has more than enough. We'll assume he listens to the show. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. So let's. Uh, and and I guess the, the the piggyback off that for actual content is uh, you know running smaller level events. Right. So we'll uh, we'll just dive in on that a little bit. So Neil Adeptable, you're hosting this year. So you get to make the pack. And it's always an Ohio hosted event. We've somehow made that law. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Yeah. yeah. Last year was at Dave Rokes. This year uh -huh. it's at yours. And then the year after that will be at uh Mr. McGinnigal's. So yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, well, it's gotta be a rotation. Yeah. But yeah. Once you, um, it, you know, yeah, explain. Walk walk us through your plans this year. Yeah. So last year we did it at Dave's. Um, we just had kind of an overnighter this year. We're doing three days. So, mm -hmm. um, this should be, hopefully you guys are going to make it in Thursday night. Oh, we can have we'll be in well before that. Cause I think me and cause me and Matt and Alex are coming up together. Me and Matt just took off and Alex is done at like one thirty, So we'll be there by dinner time at the latest dinner time by latest. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make sure I'm off work by then. <laughs> <laughs> fair that's fair let um, us know we'll get barbecue on the way we'll hang out all right there you go um but yeah so um we'll, we'll do thursday night then with friday saturday and then you know half a sunday or wherever you guys however long you want to stay so that you guys can get home and get back to normal lives but um we are doing uh chuck demanded a pack this always year. always demand a pack so there was a pack i and i threw together the the most ridiculous pack I could come up with. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's so good. It's so good. Right. So these these kind of like Adepta won't or like you know, these events that we do during Adepticon um, is kind of like for me, um, what I enjoy is like it's just a celebration of friends and the games that we like to play. Yes. And so that's what we're going to try to do over these three days is to play as many of the games that we like to play as possible. Um, of course, Age of Sigmar will be the preeminent mm -hmm, game mm -hmm. and uh what we've done is we decided to do if you want to join in there's going to be i think like 11 11 guys um and if th some people are not going to be able to make it there all three games or whatever but for those who do we call those you know, people fair weather adeptive right, owners 100 <clears throat> percent. and uh it's i think five games is what we're playing or six games i think it's six, you games. six, you six yeah. yeah 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 two games then three games and one game on sunday so um we're gonna start out with four 40k slash fantasy little adjustment to the pack here so yep. you can choose to either play 40k or fantasy in the first game it doesn't matter like there is no set um uh game plan or battle plan to play at all you just play whatever you want to play it just has to like you have to keep match play type points right for it. okay and then the next game will be Sigmar, and it'll flip-flop between 40K slash Fantasy and then a Sigmar game. And then whoever has the most points from all of those systems at the end of the weekend will be our overall champion. Um, we'll figure out who is the 40K champion who scored the most points with that. Well, it, even if there's only one game of 40K played, <laughs> yep. whoever gets the most points will be the champion. And then Fantasy, same thing there. So um, we'll probably use a scoring system. Um, I will... I will encourage the scoring system um, from uh, Adepticon for fantasy, uh, whether that happens or not, or Chuck just gives me the middle finger and plays whatever he wants. That's, uh, if, that's another listen, story. Listen, every game of fantasy I decide to play at this, this event, if you're playing me, here's what it's going to be. 
we have the time limit on on how many hours we have to play. I don't care about scenario. We're just playing till there's no models left on the board. Ugh. And then you win. Oh, six six turns max. Oh, I don't even like six turns in fantasy. Oh, come on. That if is one of my great If you products, can't table much. your opponent in six turns in fantasy, what list are you bringing, Neil? Come on. Uh, I don't know. It's too much. Too much. But um, let's see here. Um, All right, fine. I'm bringing, like, I'm, bringing dwarves, I'm bringing dwarves battle for the past every fantasy game. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> also, cheese ball. Yeah, that's um, cheese ball hard. Challenges. So you can do grudges basically for every game. Um, I don't have a set time limit because we're just at my house That's playing true. games. So um, play your game out. And uh, it's not like we're going to just jump from one to the other. Somebody wants to go get lunch at one time. They go get lunch. Um, you just try and play people you haven't played. Yep. Right. There's no like Swedish, like, you know, tournament, you know, no, none of that. Kind actually, of actually, this would be. So uh, I'm, I'm pulling this loosely from Triumph and Treachery. And also loosely from like the uh, team events, you should you should make a card for everybody, and it just random shuffle, and just throw two down on the table, and that's who plays. Oh, that's true. But what if I get Dave? You know, you're the TO. You can you can, you can just you can you can, you can just adjust it and switch it. Is <laughs> that's so great, <laughs> Dave? You know, I mean that. Um... Yeah, so we're going to be doing that. And then at night, um, after like the main games are done, um, it's just going to be uh, – well, it's going to be a full day of drinking and uh, frivolity. And then like small games like Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, I don't know if uh, Matt can convince anybody to play any of the other games he plays. Um, I think he's going to be pushing for some Marvel Crisis Protocol, and I think a couple other guys are as well. So. Yeah, there's a couple guys there. I will probably won't. Yeah, that's fine. I enjoy watching and hanging out, but yeah, it's yeah. This is uh, this is a weekend of just trying to have fun. So I'm not going to force anybody to play anything. You want to sit around and drink? You want to do you know whatever? No <laughs> matter to me. So uh, I'll play terrible music while you guys all play games that I don't care about. Yeah. Speaking of music, <laughs> everybody has to have entrance music for each game. So yeah, we're coming down like wrestling. I'm, all right, I'm a, I'm a little bummed. That it has to be one single entrance music for you, for you. I was having it one that was my army specific each time because I have three different armies, so I have one spe specific for each. But uh, you know, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Now I'm only going to choose one because I feel like you know, you know, it's me coming to the table, not my army, right? You know, I'm bringing the flair. Okay. But uh, I'll, I'll I'll allow I'll allow a different one per army. That's fine. Okay. All right. I mean, especially if it's the same artist, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not to give it away <laughs> i wonder who it could be my goodness mm. uh, yeah so we'll have some fun there uh, while you're doing your entrance theme music and you're getting to the table uh, i expect uh you to be talking shit like 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 wrestling when they get interviewed right <laughs> so it's gonna be it's just gonna be stupid right and uh that's what that's why i have fun playing these games when it's stupid like that so um but yeah, that's that's pretty much. Uh, we may have a five foot tall Galmaraz that will be given out in a way that I deem fit. Yep. Uh, probably to myself because I think it's cool. Hey. And the winner, uh, winner's the winner. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so nobody count on that because I might just keep it. Well, there you All go. Right, um, and then we might have some other uh, awards and you know stupid crap as well. Turns out um, I've got some uh, vindictors that need to be uh, uh, moved, so you know those yeah. might become a little uh, little prize support for for a lucky uh, guy. So uh, make sure my name's on that list, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, that's that's really what's going to be happening for Adeptivolt for the most part. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. And then actually, that kind of does set up real quick before we kind of the ancillary topic of running small events like this um so all things going well episode 50 to be recorded live in person recorded mm -hmm. at adeptable 2023 with whoever the hell's around yeah it's so, probably gonna be a mess no it's gonna it's, it's gonna, gonna be, gonna be fun mess. it's gonna be a mess it's gonna be one of the first podcasts where i actually have to listen back just to make sure <laughs> we're not too drunk um so everyone look forward to episode 50 being that 
which also means there's not going to be a podcast next week. So we're going to take the week off as we prepare for Adept of Uh Also, it's my birthday and my wife's birthday week. So that's a good enough excuse, I guess, as well. Mm. But yeah, but if it's delayed a week after that, the podcast was not worth putting out. So Right. It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not you... even appropriate for our explicit content. So. Right. Well, actually, well, no, it'd be like two weeks delayed because I won't be home till Sunday. Okay, the next podcast is going to be a while, folks. Just, but it's going to be a big one. Just, just I promise that big one. Either way, it'll be it'll be a couple weeks away. Just yeah, number fifty needs some fanfare. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. I might even be willing to take the uh, copyright strikes and just get some uh, get some get some Taylor Swift on the intro music. We'll see. <laughs> Why? Well, actually, no. Can you get strikes if you're not monetized? Or they just mute it. I don't know. Um... Yeah, we'll find. We'll find out. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for it. Uh, but I got a lot of Warhammer to get in between then and now to get through first. So Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, uh, running smaller events uh, with friends. Uh, I mean, we've, we've both done this many a times now. Right. Um, how do you... Well, I guess I'll... Let me, let me, let me, kind well, of let me, let me ask you this. Um... What of your favorite events you've ever been to? And I know they're not all created equal, and I know they're kind of different, uh, like apples and oranges sometimes. But what was the most fun you have playing Warhammer? Realms of War. In, right. In England. Yep. Okay. 100%. After that, what comes after that? Give me your top three. Top three. Number one is Realms of War. Mm-hmm. Um. Number two would be my first Adepticon, which is the year we met. Uh huh. Number three would probably be this last year's Tarathi Invitational. There we go. There we go. I was hoping you'd say that. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what you'd say, but I was hoping. Yeah, you'd we say did that. not plan this talk out. We're going on. <laughs> going on I really wanted to know because to me, uh, a lot of my favorite ones. I would probably say that too. Like the very first Adepticon I ever went to, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, probably followed by um maybe the nova that i helped you helped you out a little bit okay that was fun never got to do that before and then outside of that um i really like these uh these smaller events like the therathi invitationals and stuff like that they have been a blast so there is definitely a place um and a strong place in the hobby for these small events 10 people um Mm -hmm. not planned out you know super well and that's really what I want to kind of talk about when we're talking about putting together small events is you don't have to do too much. In fact, yeah. you have to do very little. Yeah. So when you're putting these together, whether it's going to be just games with your friends or whether you're going to be inviting, you know, people from the club or wherever. Or even at a club day type thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just, just make sure that when you make an event like this, that, you have fun with it. It doesn't need to be like a three game, five game, whatever, like serious match play thing. It can still be match play. Um, but this is your opportunity to do just whatever sounds fun. Yeah. And I guarantee you, your players or whoever comes to this event will have fun with it. Because right. you, you know, you're more you're more loose. There's there's a rigidity yeah. to rtts and gts right uh, i mean they're gonna because because people you're gonna you want to attract different people you want to attract a lot of people and it needs to be pretty standard from other rtts and gts that's by their nature and that's fine yeah but yeah but you you lose a lot of creative control whenever you do that mm-hmm. for instance what i put in my terathi pack and what i noticed you put in this pack is the best thing about sportsmanship score and it yep. says there is no sports score because if you're an ass i wouldn't invite you Right. <laughs> it's the best. Yeah, that's it. Like you that's a great thing about an invitational event. You don't have to worry about shit when it comes to that. I mean, yeah. uh, and if you do, like if there is somebody being a poor sport, these are your buddies, right? You can tell them whatever the hell you want, yeah. right? And, uh, and if they're any kind of uh, decent character, they're going to say, well, yeah, you're right. I'm being a dick. Yeah, like we, we all do it. We just call each other out. That's what you do. But absolutely. So, yeah. No, I, 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 I 100% agree. Like there's, there's room 
for these types of events for sure in your calendar because they can be ad hoc they can be done on the fly they can be you know two three games in a day uh or i mean if you have a weekend you can do you can do five games six games like we're doing two games uh, well six games across three days with lots of hanging out uh i mean Mm -hmm. it's 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 a great way because i mean if we're all honest and i think everyone will admit this the best part about this hobby is the people we have along the way Mm -hmm. like anytime i go to a major event the game is always my littlest concern i'm there to hang out with friends and make new friends we all just share this game as a common interest and we all love this game greatly but yeah that's 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 my goal whenever I, I I do anything is just to meet people, hang out with people, and learn learn their stories. Right. And this is just going to the next level of that because the focus on this is entirely the people, and the games yeah. can get fun. Like I said, I mean, throughout the Invitational every year it changes game systems based upon my whims. For for <laughs> for Adept the Want this year, they said whichever the way whichever way Chuck's blowing at the time. Yep. Yep. Wherever, <laughs> whatever, however I pivot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like this one, I I love that you're. You're like, okay, I want you want this to be primarily a Sigma. You want people, you want three Sigmar games. Great. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, well, with the people that you wanted to invite this year, but a good portion of us have fantasy armies, and that's been a kick of ours lately. But we also Mm -hmm. all have 40k armies, and some of the other people invited only have 40k armies. Okay, well, it's perfect. Don't get in three games of 40k. I might get in one. Might get in two. It depends on who I play and what we what we're feeling at the time. Because I might come off a Sigmar game that was amazing and go. I just need to do some pew pew space for this next game, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it just, it takes all the pressure out of it. Like, sure, there's going to be a winner of the event. But who who cares? Right. Yeah. yeah like, know, I, was, I, even, like I said, you can care. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I'm going to shoot for it. Why the hell not? You know, but uh, in the end, it's, it's just a, it, it's, it's, it's so stupid. <laughs> Like well, it's, 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 it's so not match play fair and balanced that you're like, if you lose, you're like, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, terrain is whatever you have. I mean, heck, you could be you could be waking up at 9 a.m. in the morning and just like, screw it, we're playing a game on this kitchen table. It's like, yeah, there's dirty dishes everywhere. Screw it, we're playing here. That's what we, like, you yeah. know, like it's yeah. it's just, it. the focus is on the games. And like, yeah, you have the winner because it gives you something to play for for fun and it's 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 funny as well as exciting to, to aim for. Right. Um, And that's the other thing too, like, like you mentioned prize support it's just extra stuff we have <laughs> i have a, i have extra incarnates that are coming to some people for you know like there you go that sort of stuff and uh uh and even even the awards now you're going like i said you can because you're having a smaller event there's two paths you you typically aren't going to do like the middle of the road just basic prizes blah 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 bigger events will do that because they have to calculate in cost at the venue ticket sales terrain all that sort of stuff this you usually don't have to so you can go as big or as small as you want you can have a seven foot gal 3d printed um or like me you can make custom terathi invitational 2022 knives which turned out to be really good surprisingly yeah um, that's pretty cool or you could be like last year when we had the adept can't we threw like i don't think we even were doing a tournament we just threw it together last minute yeah, yeah, and the the awards were um, extra GW packaging. Like there was towel. I forget. I have the towel one, but like just empty GW boxes. Some with art, some with not. That we just wrote first, second, third, and like yeah. witty. We just sharpened the shit out of them. Yeah. yeah, and that was the awards. And actually, I even took that. Um, there's a little intro. Uh, not intro group. There's a group of friends, and my one friend invited me to this because he, you know, he's a grooms in my wedding and his high school friends were getting back into 40k so we went out to columbus to one guy's house we were there for two days smoked brisket uh actually for three days smoked brisket hung out drank wine and played 40k i said mm-hmm. hey guys do you want to i was just on a whim I'm like do you guys want to do a little mini tournament just three games and they're like yeah sure let's do it and then yeah the uh, prizes was like an empty can of coke um a piece of paper and i think i had a gw box and i bought something um from there yeah and just yeah. just sharpened it up and it was like here you go <laughs> and like and, this, and, and that sounds stupid but 
the the award I won is is sitting there right next to whatever best sports or coolest army awards smacked right up on the wall right next to it because yeah. it's not it's not the thing right it's well, the memory it's, in a, it's the memory a hundred percent right I have so the I empty can of coke it. right next to yep. the towel box right next to my um, <laughs> Warhammer Hero Award <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> like it's yeah that's the thing too like I I mean that this personal thing I don't. I never want to win models on an event. I don't mm-hmm. want prize support end event. I want stupid trophies that are like ninety five right. cents. I don't want models. I want. I'm an adult. Like I get some people. That's how they get their models, and it's fine and sure. But I'm like, nah. I don't need it. I, I, I buy the models I want. I don't need random ones. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll take the models, <laughs> but you know yeah. I'll take them as well. But it's the like that stupid top of the box means as much to me as any award that I've ever won. Right. And the other thing is too, is when you go to these stupid little events like that, you actually get a chance when you're some like, you know, um, <laughs> terrible war gamer. Like I am when somebody makes an event with a bunch of asinine, uh, uh, things to win, there's a chance you might actually, uh, uh pull something <laughs> out. You know, so That's always nice. Yeah. I, I remember the, uh, one time at, I think when the first early, I don't know if they were battle across the realms yet, if you labeled them as such, but it was one of the events you ran. It was competitive, and I managed to get best order. And dear God, did it drain every single fiber of my being to get that? <laughs> <laughs> like I, it's like yeah, I, I have it in me, and I can. But boy, is it is it hard for me to maintain that level of like mm-hmm. stress that whole time? Yeah, but, uh, sure. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, like, one thing I noticed was um, I ran, I've run, I think maybe three three match play events and uh, as a TO and as somebody who likes to the events that I like to run, I like them to be more lighthearted. Yeah. And as they moved into more and more and more competitive, the last competitive event that I ran, what I was seeing was just people just really like it was getting down to fourth and fifth game. Right. And the guys at the top tables, man, these, these are guys that I'm used to like drinking with and joking with and everything. And they're locked in and you can tell they're stressed and you know, they're trying to trying to win the event. And I'm like, Oh man. Well, I mean, I'm uh, they're clearly having fun because they're trying to win this event, but like, I don't get to BS with them. Like it just doesn't have the same feel. Right. And so, and and there's a place for that. Don't get me wrong. But I, what I enjoy, what I like the most is this kind of is i hate to say it but like the beer and pretzels kind of vibe right where you're just out and you're just messing around with dice but um, i think i think get... everybody appreciates that on, the, on, the, on their own level too but like you know and, and here's the thing too if you have a community because i'm gonna i'm gonna pull on the um the team america like anytime i see pictures of them when they're at their practice weekends I don't know if they actually run like mini tournaments with themselves, but like they're playing tough as nails competitive games, and I think they're having just as much fun as what we have is like at the Tayrath Invitational where we're we're playing very casually. Right. I think, you know, when you're running this event too, if if your community is hardcore hyper focused, but you guys do it in a way that's uh, like affable and fun. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I used affable right there, but sure. Um, that might be perfectly fine. You know, like for, mm-hmm. for us, the community we have, for who we play regularly, we're very casual. Half of us don't go to tournaments anywhere. So, you know, we need to be very relaxed and chill. And that's where we get our fun because that's just how we all play naturally. But, yeah. so, but I, I wanted to make that distinction clear because, like, you can be yeah. hyper competitive yeah. and still be playing at the same level of fun if that's what your little inv- invite group small event thing is going to do and how they, how mm-hmm. they want to be. Sure. Make it yours. Yeah. And to be fair, some people enjoy that stress. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like they thrive off that. So yep. God bless them. Yep. Yeah. Just because I don't understand it doesn't mean that it yeah. doesn't make it that makes it wrong. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> so don't be afraid to do it however you want. You just got to make sure you read read the room of and and like I said, you know, that's why I was just like make a pack meal like out of out of silliness. But you know, it sets packs set an expectation. Even if it's a small little event, even if it's an invitation where you have four four people, and you're mm-hmm. one of them, write a little mm-hmm. pack for it because you're going to set the intent of the event going in. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there was kind of like a, even with the, the Adepta won't, where I felt like the way that you were kind of talking about it was leaning towards we were all going to bring something to beat face. And, like, I don't think any of us wanted that. So I'm glad you kind of, like, changed that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah I like, mean, that's not, uh, the precedent was set, I think, in the last one that, yeah. you know, yeah, you're oh, more yeah. than welcome to. I mean, absolutely more than welcome to. And, uh, and I may still, like, you, you can, you can do whatever you want. I don't care how seriously you take it. Uh, doesn't make a lick of di- difference to me as long as, like, the event itself, like I said, it's just so acidine that. Yeah. <laughs> if you may be able to bring that beat face army and still lose just based on, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe you suck at 40K, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or heck, you, you mean, I mean, who knows? Like, because it's, it, it's all for fun, too. Like, I have to walk up, like, here's my competitive 40K list. And, you know, here's someone else that's like, hey, this isn't, like, a legal list, but it's fun and it's cool. And and, and you're just like, eh, all out. Have some fun. And I'm just, I, and I get run over because <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah. You know who knows, but I, I don't know if that will happen. But like that could happen at these types of things if that's mm. how loose you're playing. So, right. You know, it's 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 a great thing. Everyone, I mean, you, you got a group of people around you, uh, and not to mention like just being around your friends. Like it's good for your mental health. It, mm-hmm. it, it you know it helps relax you. Sometimes you need to be away from home for a little bit. Uh, you know, it makes you miss home, but you know it's it's good to. You know, and then for that, us for this, like our community around here is all men, so it's kind of like a, a a boys getaway too, which is fun. Like you know, it's fun to have those as a, as a guy. So yep, yep. I know my uh, my my kids will be there Thursday night, but uh, then the whole family's going to be gone <laughs> after that. So <laughs> you kick yeah. them out, get out. Yep, they're out. So they're heading down to Columbus, uh, down to their. Uh, uh, their aunts and uncles, oh, nice. and uh, my wife's got something going on in Columbus that weekend. So, I do look forward to being Thursday night, having probably no, it'll probably be good because your your family will still be there. Um, but tell you what, that next day, that Friday, I guarantee you, I'm eating those cookies for breakfast. <laughs> oh, oh wow! <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, I believe I have in the pack food. Uh, if you're staying here, I'll have coffee brewing and tea available. If you're someone like Dave, oh, yeah. Dave's a tea drinker, God, the worst. Yeah, third in the, and third then, in the um, river, come on. <laughs> except I'll make herbs, uh, herbs. herbs. I'll make eggs and uh, serve you uh, you MFers all the pancakes you like. That's in the past. That's true. That's true. And I'm going to take advantage of that. <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of that. And you have, you have three people that lift heavy weights regularly coming to this, by the way. Mm-hmm. So I don't have enough weight for you guys. I I, I do not. Well, no, but well, do, you, do, you pan- do you have enough eggs Dumbo and pancakes? Are pretty significant. Do you have enough eggs and pancakes? Is the question. Uh, the, we, me and Alex have talked. Um, well, there's actually me, Alex, and Mike have also talked. <laughs> but me and Alex, if we play each other, we might just say okay, and we go to the gym for two hours, and then come back and we flip a coin, see who wins the game. That's hilarious. I got a. Um, <laughs> I don't have a gym membership there anymore, but literally, like. You know where that Mexican restaurant is? Like, yeah. not even like a half a mile from my house. There's a rec center there. I don't know if you could just go and like pay for a day. Do you have a Planet? I think Alex still has his Planet Fitness membership, and he can bring a guest. There's, I mean, there's there's one everywhere. Yeah, so, so I'm yeah. that'll probably be it. But there's also, uh, this is where we have to think. Um, me, Mike, and Alex might do a challenge one day, like when mm-hmm. we're not during games, but like after games or before games, um, and we think it's going to be. We each get to choose two movements, and whoever can do the most weight on those movements gets a point. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, now there's c- a couple caveats, because, like, um, Alex is really good on the bench. So he can't be, like, push-ups for failure or max bench press. Like, you can't do the same muscle group more than once. Right. So. Yeah, and I also have, like, written in the pack, let's see here, fitness. If you're playing Chuck in any games and you can uh, rep out more push-ups than him, you get to decide who goes first in each game. If you can't do 10 push-ups, Chuck gets to decide who goes first. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be really well, interesting because I'm pretty sure Alex can do more push-ups for reps for me. He's much right. better at the calisthenics. Uh, I'm so not sure about the, Mike. But Mike's a strong dude, so. Well, the, the take-home, though, is if, if, if you like just kind of like asinine shit in your events or whatatever, you can do that. Yes. Small play, type of event, play right? to the strengths you of the your friends. Stuff that has nothing to do with Warhammer and somehow make it something to do with Warhammer. Also, uh, I, I still, uh, I still owe based upon the game of fours. I still owe four shots. By the way. Oh yeah, yeah, that'll I'm, that'll I'm, happen. I'm gonna time. I'm gonna be doing it at that that place because I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Cause I'm not gonna do four yeah. shots at home alone in a day. Like that's stupid. 
Yeah, right, right. <laughs> what? My wife's mm-hmm. like, what the hell's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, we've got uh, So I have an optional rule, and I've done this um, at one of my other, like I used to call them house hammer events, right? Yeah. Um, that's, that's but good one term. of my other house hammers, we had... Uh, I'm, I'm going to steal that for the title. We're going to call it house hammer events. There we go. Yeah, that's a good title. Um, optional rule, each time your opponent takes uh, a unit of yours off the table, you may make them take a drink of whatever alcoholic beverage they have decided on. <laughs> I remember this. Right? And then vice versa as well. And then you decide when they stop drinking. And that really that really makes for a fun game. Maybe not a fun night and mm-hmm. maybe not a fun next morning. But uh, that is encouraged throughout our event as well. Yeah, but the right. thing you have to keep in mind, if you make someone take a long drink, they're probably right. going to kill something of yours eventually. Right, exactly. It's going to come back to you, right? Yeah. So you got to be you got to be somewhat nice unless uh, you got a tolerance like uh, like a dwarf. Yeah. So but uh no, that's that's pretty good. I I'm I'm excited. I, I encourage everybody to have make a house hammer event. Um mm-hmm. it's a good time. And especially will... too if it's if it's something like this where you know, like I said last year couldn't make Adepticon. This year because of life family and financial situations across all of our group of friends it just doesn't make sense to go without mm-hmm. everybody so that's why we're not going so you know if you're newer in the hobby uh or younger and don't have lots of extra free funds to make these big expensive trips because they are expensive consider doing this on one of the weekends when those events are happening like you know we're going to be talking about the reveal show at adepticon we're going to be enjoying like we'll probably have the games from adepticon on the tv streamings just oh yeah i've so got a, the I've feel got a projector the that's gonna be yeah. shooting you know down the basement and i've got another tv upstairs that can be playing uh, the stream the whole uh, whole whole week so yeah and if you if you can't make one of these big events for whatever reason but you can get together with your friends at your house for a weekend and you can put that stuff on and still enjoy the atmosphere and and the celebration of warhammer for a weekend like absolutely you should you should do it there's there's no reason not to Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Neil, do you have any uh, other closing thoughts or, or, or any any? Um, tell you what, actually, here's how we should close out the show. A little bit of smack talk. Is there anybody at Adepta Want that you want to challenge game one? Wow. And do you want to no. talk some shit? And I think that's the first time we swore in this episode. So good for game us. Game one. Game one is technically forty k or fantasy, right? Correct. So. I've I've recently received a nickname, which is "Son of a Bitch Neil" over on uh, Big M's Power Hour. Yes, 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 um, yeah. from Matt Hayward himself, right? And uh, the last time I played Matt in 40k, um, the game was over after one turn in my favor. Right? He, he might be bringing so those. I don't even know. Again, though. I don't know that it would be fair to play Matt, right? Because I don't want to have to just you know just wipe his face all over the table, right? Mm, I see, I see. So I would actually like to put it out there if there's anybody else. Who would like to bring a challenge to me? You know, I you know I'd love to challenge Matt, but it's just it's it's like clubbing a baby deal at this point. It's not it's not worth it for me, right? It's not worth my time to play Matt at this point. That's, so that's um, that's fair. And and Cole, he's not even the main host; he's a co-host. Like, is he even worth your time? No. In fact, I've actually the last two games we've played, I've, I've beaten him as well. So. You know, I'd love to find some different opponents, maybe somebody who could possibly give me some competition. Uh, any of you who are out there, you know, maybe there's ter- Terry's won my events before. Maybe mm-hmm. Terry would like to step up, you know, take on the old T.O., see how that works out for him. Um, I have no idea what kind of 40K player Terry is. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a really bad for me. I have no idea. But well, uh, the uh... towel, the towel are, uh, are cleaning the gun barrels right now. Well, I mean, ready. you could be, you could have a fantasy game here too. So, are the high elves are they polishing up their armor? That's true. Though they're though they're ready, they're ready. Are they're they, not fully painted still. Are um, they ready? Are they really ready? Are they going to be fully painted? Are they going to be ready? Are they going to be ready? Um, because Neil, right here, right now, Terathi wants for revenge from the Terathi Invitational. I want to uh, fuck up Eltharian with Terathi herself. Are you? I wanna, are you? I want to push his shit so far up his ass. Are you challenging you, me? You go, you know what? I am a Dark Elf oh. player, Neil. You're right. I need to get rid of these High Elves. Well, I need to shelve the High Elves. Don't get rid of them. And you need to start playing Dark Elves. I am challenging you on Fantasy Game 1 because Tayrathi wants her fucking revenge. 
<laughs> I accept. I don't think it's going to go well for you, man. Oh, it's going to go so well. We're pulling out the big guns. <laughs> 2,500, not 2,400, which is just an asinine That's number. That's just extra fun, no. fun shit that I get. No, 2,500 points. See, I don't know. I don't know because you're using Ben's pack and uh, yep, yep. I don't know. The, uh, the, the, banner, the banner of the World Dragon kind of uh, took a hit it's in only that pack. Three plus. It's, it's only three plus, plus. no, it's two plus. It was, it was, it was a lot, lot more loosey goosey, and then, and straight out of the I book. And Terathi, are you sure? No, I don't need the the banner of uh, the Crutch Dragon. I don't are need you it. even gonna take it? Probably not. Oh, jeez, didn't take it in my last list. Neil, don't need it. Neil, I'm, I feel so sorry for you. Why? Why? Are you, you I mean, you, okay. I'm gonna offer you offer you a chance to draw right now. <laughs> it's the best offer you're gonna get. Otherwise, you're dead. Otherwise you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want I want to get my revenge. This is going to be a strength hammer podcast. All right, this is all right. Civil game War. Wow. I'm so we're so used to like beating up on big M's that we have to actually just just infighting now. Is what and it is. I'll I'll be honest, like I'm gonna I'll probably bring Kraith, something fun, something simple for my daughter's a cane. Uh, my mm -hmm. Drakari is like a fun list. There's like it has flyers. Flyers are terrible right now, but it's just fun. I have like one trick, and if it works, cool. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But my fantasy army, <laughs> I keep looking at it like I'm gonna make this list good. <laughs> you know, I've never, I've never played you in 40k though. You know that, right? You never have, have you? Mm -mm. Oh, I thought we no we didn't. No, we did. Yeah, we did last year at Death of Wall. It was my Drakari versus your Tau. We actually played a game. Did we? Yeah, we did. Did I win? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> actually. It's a great radio right there. It's so good. Oh, my God. Oh. All right, well, we'll figure it out at that point, but I do accept your challenge. All right, that sounds good to me. I, I'm looking forward to that because I'd rather start this game, this weekend out right, and playing you is always a good, good way to start it. All right. Cool. All right, everybody, stay Stormcast strong. We'll see you in a while. Uh, until then, happy hobbying. Mm -hmm.